welcome to Chicanic. Today we have a PPF 210 Echo Power Pruner made by Keywords. Um, it's probably about 20 years old. It's my personal pole saw, which has been extremely neglected and not used for the last three to four years. Um, I highly sus suspect that I could probably put gas in it and mess with the choke a little bit and actually get it to run. But uh, for the intent of this video, we're going to go ahead and change everything out and make it great again. To do this project, you're going to want to go ahead and go to the store and get a few things from your local lawnmower shop. Um, a spark plug, an air filter, a carburetor kit, and the fuel line assembly, which comes with your fuel filter and your tank vent already attached. It's pretty awesome. Um, if not, you can buy it in pieces and put it together yourself. Um, you'll definitely need some carburetor cleaner. You'll want a spark plug tool, probably a flathead, and a Phillips. So it looks like it has sat so long that most of the gas has evaporated. Um, the inside of the tank does not look that bad at all. Um, the primer bulb is full of just the oil that's left. The gasoline has evaporated. Um, the grommet is completely deteriorated and starting to pooch out of the uh, fuel tank. So we're going to get all this apart and start changing things out. Alright, so first things first, we're going to remove the spark plug, and I'm pretty confident that the piston looks good, but it's always nice to check, make sure that you are not working on a dead machine, so. And it still has its cross thatching, it looks beautiful inside. Next, we are going to remove the air filter cover. Take out the old air filter and remove the two bolts that are holding on the carburetor assembly. And it's a little stuck from sitting for so long. Next, you're going to want to remove the fuel lines. Oh, and they are stuck. There's the nasty fuel assembly. Be careful, because you don't want to break these nipples that are on here. Because over time, they do get brittle. You know that magic moment when they, uh, stop the video and then come back and it's off. That might happen right here. <laughs> Cuz I didn't bring my pliers. Oh look, it's magic. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is remove the throttle cable from the carburetor. So you are going to push this lever and when you get all the way about right there, the throttle cable will pop out and you will grab it with your needle nose, like so. And then you can unscrew the carburetor off of the throttle cable. Next we're going to put in the fuel line assembly. With it comes a line for your tank vent the fuel filter line, and then the return line. You're just going to slide it in the tank, but you'll need to know which one is your fuel filter line and your return line. Right now we know that the shorter line here is the fuel filter line. So we're just going to make sure that lays in the bottom of the tank correctly. We're going to push the back side of this grommet in. We're going to grab a flathead and work it in there. Okay, now that we have the fuel tank grommet in place, your tank vent goes nicely up into this spot right here. And we remember that the short one is the fuel filter line. Next, we're going to go inside the carburetor. All right, to take the carburetor apart, you have these four Phillips head screws, and we're just going to take them out.
This particular carburetor also has a screw holding on this block. And then this will come apart now. Yeah, that's nasty. It definitely isn't that bad. Um, seen much worse, but. So we are going to take the screen out. Now we're going to take apart the diaphragm side, metering diaphragm. sunk in you can tell yeah it definitely needs to be changed um, it is not as hard as some of them that I've seen especially after sitting for years but could could have been worked out but uh, we're gonna go ahead and replace it we're gonna go ahead and take this screw out which holds your needle valve Keep letting all this fall in there just so we don't lose anything. And there's your needle valve you're going to get out. Alright, so you have it apart now and it needs to be cleaned. Alright, to clean out your carburetor, first you're just going to give it an overall spray everywhere. So. Wear your safety goggles so you aren't sprayed in the face. And we want to make sure to get it. Alright, we're going to go through our needle hole. It's best to hold it in this position so nothing sprays at you. And like that. That's pretty good. Next, we get the diaphragms off of the block and go ahead and give it a good once over. You never ever want to blow compressed air into these. They have little tiny diaphragms inside of them that you will destroy. All right, so next we're going to put all the new pieces into the carburetor. These are quite small, so I don't want to set them down, so. Because we can go ahead and put those in right now. So, your needle. We'll go back into the needle hole. We're going to go ahead and find the screw that holds your needle down. So you have it... Your needle lever, you want to put it together like so. You have your spring. You have your needle valve spring, which you'll set in its hole. Hopefully it will stay where it's supposed to go. Okay, so the more you do this, the better you'll get. Once you have everything in place, you can lay this on top of your spring, come on down, grab your needle, and then hold it firmly in place until you can get your screw back in. Check it. And it's working. We're going to go ahead and put the gasket and diaphragm back on this side and the cover. The gasket goes first. Then your metering diaphragm. Your plate, which is nasty. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up.
Now we're going to put our screen back inside. We got a new screen. Once that's inside, we can go ahead and put our gaskets back on. Now, the easy way to do this one is you know that that is your primer bulb side. So this is the side that goes against the carburetor. The first one you're going to put on this is the gasket. And then your diaphragm. And replace that. And remember to put the screw back in. and just clean out the primer ball a little bit because it was sort of nasty. But it's not broke, so that's good. Now, one common mistake when putting this particular bracket back on is that people will put it on this way and what it does when you tighten it down, it'll break these nipples. So make sure that you have it going away from the nipples like so. Now we're going to put our screws back in. All right, next step we are going to reattach the throttle cable to the carburetor. You can usually see about where it was uh, I'm gonna say about right there maybe um, bring this back put it in the correct position to get your cable back in and then might have to give it a little help to all right, once you have the throttle cable back in place, you're going to want to make sure that you have it loose enough to where it can get all the way back to the throttle uh, adjust. And once you're like that, and that it pulls all the way closed. Okay. Now we can reattach our fuel lines. Remember, the short one was the fuel filter. The fuel filter one goes to the, one, the nipple closest to the engine. To make it a little easier to get on, you can get your needle nose pliers, stick them in the end, and give it a little stretch. Pushing, stretching, twisting, stretching. Just like that, very quickly you can get it on the nipple pretty easily. Well, we're going to do that with this. Go ahead and snip it a little even. And we're going to stretch. 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 And put on. Okay, now that we have our fuel lines on place, we're going to go ahead and reattach it to the engine. Here's your air filter assembly. Make sure you have your, thro uh, your choke lever towards the back. Now we're going to put in a new spark plug. You can check your gap, but most of them do come pre-gapped. Gap is 30 thousandths. 
We're going to pop in a new air filter. Put your gas cap back on. And we're done. All right, so we have completely put everything we can possibly put in this uh, PPF 210 Echo Power Pruner. And uh, we're ready to put some gas in it and see if we can get it to run. All right, now we're gonna see if it runs. We're gonna make sure that it's turned on, prime it, put it on choke, and it wants to start.